Hey everybody, Dr. Mike Quast here with iCairo Clinics. I wanted to give you a little bit of information today. You know, a lot of people think your back like pops out of place. Chiropractors pop it back in. It's not really how it works. Uh, if your back dislocated, that would be called a facet dislocation. You'd probably be in the emergency room. Um, that's not what chiropractors are working on every day. Uh, even Dee Dee Palmer, the definition of a subluxation was less than a dislocation. So what is happening then if your back isn't popping out of place? So I wanted to show you that. I'm gonna do a little drawing here. Vertebrae, right? Another vertebrae. Forgive my artwork, but um, so you have the facet joints are here. These are the facet joints. You'd have another one here. And that's where the two vertebrae come together. Now, one of the things you have around the facet joints is a lot of times people forget about, they don't think about the facet joint, but the vertebrae, you actually have muscles. They're called deep stabilizer muscles. These are what are getting adjusted when you go to the chiropractor. So you have these muscles that go from one vertebrae to the other. And these muscles, for example, this one here is called intertransversary. That muscle there, you also have between the spinous processes of these vertebrae, you have muscle called interspinalis. You also have the muscle here, rotator brevis. You also have the muscle here, rotator longus. And you also have your multifidus, So you have all these little muscles that are going from different parts of the vertebrae up and over. And what happens are when these little muscles get hurt and injured from things that we do in life, slips, falls, accident, these muscles will contract spasm, either become hypertonic or too tight, or they'll actually spasm and contract down. And when they do that, you can see if these over here did that, that whole vertebrae would tip and be out of alignment, but not out of joint. Very big distinction, okay? The adjustments are done to these muscles. Now, what in the muscle? Inside the muscle, you have receptors. And the receptors in the muscle are what we stimulate when we do an adjustment. So, however the adjustment's done, it's stimulating the muscle spindles, which are the proprioceptors, the mechanoreceptors inside these muscles. So, proprioceptors are like this. How do I know my thumb is up in the air? I can't see it, but I know it is because the receptors in there are telling my brain that's where I am in space. So you have all these little receptors in these muscles. Again, muscle spindle. That is doing what's called a stretch reflex. They also do not only proprioception, but they do nociception too which are pain signals. So that's why a lot of people feel better when they get adjusted because you're stimulating these receptors and then that gets taken care of. So these muscle spindles are there. You also have other receptors in there that are called Golgi tendon organ. So you have the G Golgi tendon organ, GTO, and that does stretch reflex in the tendon. You also have receptors in the facet joints that are called joint receptors. The joint receptors are actually in these facet joints. So these are some of the different receptors that you have that we're actually working on. Uh, when you're working on these, it's really important to understand that the receptor is what you're doing the treatment to. The receptor then, what does it do once you stimulate the receptor? The receptor is gonna send messages up to your brain. How does it do that? 
Well, let's go back and look at some of the anatomy, right? So if you look at the spinal cord, you look at, we've got the muscle. So these muscles that we're talking about. So here's the muscle. This is the tendon on the end here. And then inside, you have the muscle spindle. So that muscle spindle is going to send information over to the cord, right? Here's your 1A afferent, sending messages into your spinal cord. That message is then going to come down and you're going to shoot muscles through the alpha motor neuron. It's going to send a message to the muscle. It's also then you're going to get a message back to the spindle. And then you're also going to get through the 1B a message going all the way back over to the tendon. That's the 1B. One thing too to realize on the 1A afferent, that message coming in when it goes into the cord, it's then going to also send a message that goes up to the brain. And that's how the information is getting back and forth. So this is the neurology of it. So when we stimulate that spindle, boom, you get that stretch reflex, comes through here, drops down, tells the muscle, relax, resets the spindle, tells the tendon, relax. Messages all then go up to the brain. This tight muscle here that was compressing and pinching down, whoop, now it really relaxes and opens up takes pressure off of the facet joint because it was compressing the facet joint. Now it opens that up. Then these receptors all start shooting messages going up to your brain. That's how that all works. Now what's cool too is you also have receptors in your skin. So a lot of people don't think about this, but if you were to take a piece of skin and you got your epidermis and you got your dermis, deeper layer, right? You have receptors in there. You got uh, the, the Merkel's disc, Mussini corpuscles. Uh, we also have down in the uh, dermis, you have the Krauss's end bulbs, you have the Ruffini corpuscles, and you have the Pacinian corpuscles as well. Those are all sending signals. So when you're stimulating the skin, these receptors are doing light touch, touch, pressure, vibration. Anything like that, they're sending all those messages back up to your brain, giving it all that data. So people always ask me, well, when you're doing the you're doing the different adjustments, you know, how does that work? Because then if you look at like some of our extremity joints, if you look at like your shoulder, where your shoulder's going in, you have all those receptors, the joint receptors that we've been talking about in your extremity joints in here. Now you also then over top of all of your spinal muscles, these deep spinal, you've got your other bigger movement muscles, right? And around your joints, you have all the different, uh, you have all the different muscle groups that are surrounding your joints as well. So you have all these bigger muscle groups that are going all around here, right? Those all have the receptors in them too, the spindles, the Golgi tendon organs. So a lot of receptor action here. So here, here's where people get the question. Well, what do I do? How do I know if I do the, the pro adjuster, the pro adjuster joint adjustment, or do I do the pro soft? Like which ones am I doing? So think about this. The more receptors you stimulate, do you think that's gonna be better or worse, right? We want to get as much change stimulation happening in here as possible. So we want to stimulate as many as we can. So when you do the pro adjuster spine adjustment, you're hitting these stretch reflexes, Golgi tendon organ, right? Muscle spindle, getting that muscle to relax and let go, measuring it with the pro adjuster. You're also getting some stimulation into the facet joint, right? The frequency and the force used, the speed of the pro adjuster works really well for that. The bigger muscle groups on the top, those bigger muscles are going to respond better to a faster rate, so higher frequency and more force. And that's where the ProSoft comes in. You're going to be working that. The tips that you use, when you put the tip on there, some of those fatter tips, why would that be valuable? 
Well, because then you're gonna stimulate even more of those skin receptors to get those messages running up to the brain. When you're looking at the extremity joints, what do you do? Use the pro adjuster joint adjustment because you're gonna be stimulating these receptors in those joints. You also use the ProSoft to stimulate the muscles. So if you can see, you're gonna be putting all this together to try to give yourself the best odds of success of changing the muscle and tissue, stimulating these nerve patterns uh, to get changed. Now here's what's cool. As you do these changes and they occur, you're gonna get your, it's kind of like when you're driving in your car and your GPS is on and you start to go a different way. What does your GPS tell you? Recalculating, right? So it's gonna start recalculating. Your brain is gonna recalculate the position senses of all these receptors that you're stimulating and they're gonna change. Today's visit, they're gonna change. Your brain recalculating, right? And then the next time you do a treatment, it's gonna change some different ways, recalculating. So you're getting your brain to do these neuroplastic changes of how it's perceiving your body and space happening all the time. This is how this all comes together. This is how this all ties together and why it's so important that you do like each one of these treatments so that you can actually get the best odds of success of happening. Hopefully that all makes sense. I know I threw a lot at you. Um, Dr. Mike, iCairo Clinics, have a great day and get better and get your function back.